Hello again everyone, we are Gaming by Gaslight. Welcome back to Dead Cells. When we last left off, we made it all the way to the Slumbering Sanctuary and then died a horrible, embarrassing, painful death to uh, a curse, really. Because we had a super powerful weapon. We had a very super powerful weapon. But unfortunately, it just did not also nice to carry. It, yeah. We got ourselves cursed, and ultimately that led to our downfall, so too bad. Mostly because our super powerful weapon was just a tad bit too slow, but at least we really managed to like embarrass the Watcher with like how badly we beat him up, so I guess that's a small consolation prize. Also, in a tiny, tiny amount of what may be good news, uh, it seems the moving company and I have come to some kind of accord here where they will have a they will courier out my computer to me, thus resolving that whole issue. Also, I think we'll go with a tactics build today, seeing as we have items that, or at least our knifey thing is a tactics related thing. We may or may not go to this challenge room. But anyway, yeah, so I'm, I'm really hoping that, I don't know, let's say Sunday, you know, hopefully that's when my uh, computer will get here. So that'll be good, because then then all of my previous problems should be over, and we'll basically have, at long last, the setup that we so richly deserve. And, you know, life will be good and stuff, because I like a good life, and good life is a generally a happy life. A happy life is a good life. Yeah. Anyway. So that's good. I'm mostly happy about that. Still a bit salty that this, you know, ever ended up being an issue in the first place, but again, that's life. Don't, uh, don't belabor the point, Gaslight. That just gets irritating. Nice parry again. Also, there is some nice delicious cake. We might want to go for that. I do like the Blood Sword, but we'll leave that for now. I mean, the thing about the Blood Sword that I've always noticed is that it, like, the bleeding effect is very powerful, but you can't really stun enemies with that sword because it has like a zero stun chance basically, so yeah. Balance Blade, also really good. It also occurs to me that is a different graphic. Pretty sure we even saw it last run and I didn't comment on it, but yeah, it's a different graphic. And what do we have here? Double notched bow, throwing knife. To be honest, I should buy both of these items, but eh, I'll just buy the double notched bow for the time being and then we'll kind of swap these around and the double notch bow will become our main weapon. I like shields, but I feel this is probably the right call. Probably, I could be wrong, but it feels right to me, so we'll go with it. And sometimes that's just how you have to do things in life. If it feels good, do it also. Don't forget that secret gaslight. Oh, but there's another secret over here, nice. Yeah, I'll leave that secret. I'm feeling too lazy to go up and get it. Which is probably silly, because that's probably like one of those rare cases where... Let's see, what do we got here? One of those rare cases where we could have got an extra stat upgrade. But you never know. Alright, what do we got here? We have our IV grenade. I think that was worth going back. We're still going to continue ignoring the hunter grenade. Mostly because I can't think of anything else right now that uh, the hunter grenade would get us. Well... No, because we won't even be fighting Spin Top Man on this particular run, so we won't be able to get the Crushinator. Which is unfortunate, but you don't always get the Crushinator. Sometimes you get other stuff. And that's fine. And by that I mean, you know, in this particular case we are not getting anything too exciting. We're just kind of moseying on down. A lot of uh, blood and guts sitting there on the floor from our fallen foes. Good, good stuff, I guess. Good stuff indeed. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, there we go. Got our little slug babies there helping us out with their cute little bow ties. Which are, I guess, not really bow ties, because they're not tying anything, are they? They're just bowing or something. Also, I've got a good feeling about this. I think we're going to win this particular, uh, oh dear. I think we're going to win this challenge room. Totally should, as long as I don't let those guys jump into me, which could happen if I'm not careful. We've also killed all the enemies, which I forget whether I commented on it or not, but it's nice that you actually get to see an enemy count, so you get an even better idea of whether you have bypassed something. It's funny. I spent so long trying to unlock that explosive lure, and yet now that I have it, I, I feel no desire to use it, really. 
kind of terrible. Kind of terrible, but, you know, there goes life and so on and so forth, so, meh. Meh, says I. Anyway, we'll move on. Uh, like I said, we're gonna try going to the clock tower, or did I say it? We're gonna try going to the clock tower this time, because we went to the slumbering sanctuary last time. So I suppose, logically, it might make more sense to, to have tried going to the slumbering sanctuary again, in the hopes that this time we'd actually unlock the spider rune, because then we'd unlock all the runes. But I kind of want to go back and forth a bit on this. I mean, if, if we don't do anything else, I would like to show off on camera the new reworked Fog Fjord, or at least part of it, because it's a pretty sweet looking area. A very sweet looking area indeed. Man, these loading times take forever, don't they, on this computer. My poor laptop. It was my pride and joy back in university, but it is quite a few years old now, so it is obviously Also, that time door is almost closed. We should totally open that. There we go. That's the good stuff right there. We'll get a bit of money. Not that we need the money, but it helps, so I'm glad we have it, because if we didn't have the money, then we might not be able to buy something better later. Also, we haven't unlocked a single shortcut yet. So, that's a thing. Oh well. You know, life goes on. As it always does. Nice. Alright. Yeah, it looks like we haven't missed anything so far. Unless on the roof of that building, which the map was kind of obscuring just a little bit. Unless there's something up there, but I don't think there is, so... We're probably good. Probably. Maybe. In fact, yeah, there's totally nothing up there, but, you know. Never hurts to check anyway, just to be safe because I wouldn't want to miss anything, because we could end up missing something really grand and spectacular, and that, that would make me feel very foolish indeed. Of course, I would never know to feel foolish, because I wouldn't see it. I mean, until the day comes where we can, like, share, uh, seeds and whatnot. If I recall, I think the developer said that that's not, like, strictly on the cards, but, uh, or in the cards, I guess, forever, but... There has been interest expressed by members of the community, so we may see that as a thing. I mean, I have to assume in the dev, like the actual dev version of the game, there's probably the ability to, like, you know, specifically enter seeds and whatnot, seeing as why else would the seed be on the screen? I mean, obviously, the reason the seed's on screen is so that. If uh, a particular build proves to be not quite proper, then, you know, players can report it to the developers. But uh, it would be cool if we could share seeds, especially because it shows up right there in the corner on the screen, because then it means I wouldn't even have to remember to share the seed. Anyone watching the episode would be able to see it, and then they could say, you know what, I bet I could do better than gaming by gaslight on that one. And then, you know, you can, and then tell me in the comments, like, haha, I beat your your runtime, or, you know, hey, if you would went this way, you would have got this, like, super cool item. And I'd be like, ah, drat. I made the wrong choices in life. But, you know, something like that. It happened. Someday. It's not strictly a... Not strictly the plan, but you never know. It could end up being something later on. Also, I guess while we're talking about, like, possible future things, and we have three bosses right now. There's apparently going to be at least two more uh, at the end, or, like, by the time the game comes into full, full 1.0. And it would be interesting... I mean, I'm kind of wondering to myself what the other two bosses would be. I mean, we've got the incomplete one, we've got the Watcher, we've got some kind of sneaky assassin, from what I have been led to believe. I haven't watched anything about the boss. I know the boss is called the Assassin, but that's basically all I know about her. And I also know that she's a she, because that's a striking plot twist of some sort. Possibly. Makes you wonder. I mean, does the identities of the bosses even matter? Because like I said, we don't know. There's no lore, really, in-game so far, except for... I mean, unless everything, like, lore-wise, is placeholder so far. I mean, all the characters seem to know who we are. So our character was definitely a person of note somewhere on this island. Possibly even the king. Also, that's an elite enemy. We totally have to fight him. Feel kind of dumb for having... I think that guy's glitched. I mean, he saw me, but he's, like, not... He's not moving, he's not doing anything. 
He's also not spawning little minions. Huh. It's kind of wacky. But, oh well. Also, you know what I just noticed? Those amulets actually level up. Which I have to assume the fact that even if even amulets have levels now, that probably, like my guess, also this is a dead end for us right now, seeing as we can't climb walls, but it occurs to me, because I know the developers made a comment, like when they removed the old, uh, the old upgrade system, which, uh, which actually kind of reminds me, it's gonna be more important than ever to make sure that we always keep up with like the most up-to-date level of weapon. But anyway, when they removed that system, they said that, like, the next update, which is actually coming, like, very soon, apparently. I'm gonna assume, like, early December. Early to mid-December. That's my guess. Although no guarantees on that, obviously. But that's my guess. But anyway, that the next update's gonna do something with that. Like, introduce a new, better, and more exciting upgrade system. Presumably one that'll make cells always worthwhile, even once you've unlocked everything. And my guess would be that you'd be able to use cells to level up your weapons during a run. So you could keep the same gear if you wanted. I mean... Hmm. I mean, there's a part of me, like, based on some of what I've read about, like, what the developers, like, their ideal way of playing through the game is, like, the, the kind of way they wanted things to flow, is that you would feel, like, as a player, you would feel uh, open to just, like, changing weapons and whatnot. So... Having it so you could just level up your weapons might run counter to that. But then again, on the flip side, it is possible that, um... I mean, that, that feels like the most logical thing to me, is that you'd be able to level up your weapon in, uh, like, mid-run. To either just level it up and, like, basically re-roll all its stats and, like, secondaries, or just make it stronger. Or maybe there'd be two kind of upgrades. Like, you could either directly upgrade its strength or just upgrade the abilities on it. So you could, like, randomly re-roll the stats it has, whatever, like, special effect it might have attached to it, and all that good stuff. I guess we'll see soon enough. Um, part of me says I should pick that up, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it sitting there for now. Just for now. I don't really see the need. But I do see the need to fight this elite enemy. Ah, it's a spiky armadillo man, dude. Oh, he's called a Forney. Okay. He'll always be armadillo man to me, though. Anyway. Yeah, you see, it's at this point I'm starting to feel like I, I'm definitely behind the eight ball as far as, uh, like, damage output is concerned. Because, okay, yeah, we're... We're taking a lot of damage here. A lot. But, on the flip side to that, we also... You know what? That actually is generally and almost always better. I mean, we won't get as much money, but... Who needs money when you can have other powers that make you invincible to your foes? And by which I mean the extra survival. Hang on a second. Hold on. I still have only 189, but I gained two... I lost one brutality, but I gained two survival. Yet I feel like I had... had 189 health already. But I, I almost feel like my health didn't scale up at all. But then again, I wasn't really paying attention to my exact... the exact numbers there, so... You know. That's kind of on me, I guess. But, uh, yeah. We are very glass cannon-like, so we'll see how how things go. I, I am a little bit concerned about my health now that I look at it. In general, as I may or may not have already commented on, I feel like in the Brutal update I'm actually more frail in general than in previous updates, which is interesting. I mean, especially since I talked a big game in previous, previous builds, or previous uh, versions of the game that I would rather do more damage than have more health. But there's a part of me that's thinking to myself, you know what, I feel like I actually have a lot less health than I had, you know, otherwise had in previous versions of the game. And I'm not sure now if I like it. But, on the other hand, I, I, I find in general, like my first couple of runs after, and my first couple sometimes, like the first dozen or so runs, after a, a new update, they tend to be like not that great and most of them tend to end up in a loss. I also feel, am I gonna really commit to fighting this? I think I am. Probably not the best uh, 
investment of my time here. Because, again, like, I have substandard weapons for what we're trying to accomplish at this particular phase of the game. And that is going to come back to hurt us, no doubt. Yeah, look at this. I'm doing not very great. Not very great at all. But we're going to keep trying, because that's what life is all about. You have to keep struggling. Ow. Good job. Even when it looks like... Also, good job on missing there with the lack of, lack of range there. But, all right. Yeah, this is actually, this is starting to look pretty grim for us, I would think. Also, I should totally pick that up. Get some more tactics, do some more damage. Okay. Anyway. We have much to learn. But we will get there, I guess is where I'm going with all of this. I'm gonna have to try, I'm gonna have to try a survival build next, because... I, I, I believe it's the Wrenching Whip, uh, Lightning, All Shields, those all scale of survival. And, of course, any colorless item that we pick up while we're, uh, you know, running through life. Your good job with that misuse of an ice grenade, by the way. Also, with that misuse right there. Yeah, we could, we could pull things off here is what I'm saying. It's gonna be challenging, and we do need a higher level weapon, because... Like, that's basically what's throwing us off now, is we haven't managed to find a better weapon. Though that's not necessarily the game's fault, that's all- that could easily be kind of my own fault there. Also- oh no. Oh no. Oh no no no. Yeah. You know what? Unless it's a daily run, in general, I don't think fighting those, uh, those jelly towers, as I'm calling them now, are worth it. I keep coming up with new names for them. I'm gonna try to make Jelly Tower like my official canon. Oh, good job, Gaslight. Excuse me. My official canon, unofficial name for them. Also, there's a clear item. But do I want a broadsword? I mean, I shouldn't be that picky. Ah, but I'm not. I'm not gonna take it. And that could come back to haunt me because. Ah, but then again, it is a slow weapon, so I suppose. I suppose it might be in my better interest to not pick it up. Also, here's a, here's a mild annoyance to me. Just a mild one. Um, it, I find it, and this basically goes back to the previous run where I, I died, but um, I don't like how the, uh, the little minions that the elite enemies summon, those guys, those guys don't count towards getting rid of your curse. But the little minions that, like, every other enemy summons, those count. And I guess, I guess it's mostly because, I guess, with the elite enemies, their little minions are, like, the exception to the rule. I mean, it would be really terrible if the little minions that the other enemies could summon didn't help reduce my curse, because some levels, like, any level where you have, like, those, um, those, uh, like, graveyard zombies that spawn more, more things. I think they're called host zombies or something. Or, uh, these tower things that spawn infinite waves of enemies. Like, they're actually pretty good for getting rid of your curse, and I, I like the fact that they exist and are a thing. I also don't know why I'm spending so much time killing all enemies instead of just kind of going faster. Because to a certain degree, I think it it's going to be important to us. Oh, dear. It's going to be important to us to uh, open some of these time doors. I don't think too important, at least, at least on this file. But once uh, 1.0 comes out, I, I think I'm definitely gonna start like a completely fresh file in order to like re-unlock everything. And training ourselves to be fast. Also, yeah, we should probably check out some of these, some of these extra areas because there's a lot of them and we're not gonna hit any more time doors. But anyway, yeah, like getting better at being fast is possibly gonna be more important. Yeah, but then again, I mean, I guess it's kind of back and forth. I mean, you want to do some runs where you're just grinding out cells, killing all enemies, and in other runs, you want to just try to be fast so you can open those time doors, because most of the time doors, also, this has tactics, so we're totally going to take it. Plus, it's stronger, which is good, since that means we're going to be able to get more money. But anyway, yeah, like... There is value in at least one time, one time going through the game and opening every time door, I think. So I have to assume especially, like, if there's still time doors that don't have blueprints or some kind of, like, special one-time unlockable in them, eventually there will be. 
so that all time doors eventually have. Also, Gaslight, you have the poison cloud of poison, and yet you're not using it, and thus you are completely wasting your potential. That's also pretty good, but it doesn't have a tactics bonus, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take it. I would rather have the tactics bonus, if I'm being entirely honest. So it may or may not be me, but I feel like in this build of the game, picking up Bellier's rune makes your ground pound stronger. But then again, ground pounds probably scale with whatever your highest stat is anyway, so... The ground pound is always going to be a useful item to have. Really? That poison cloud is not poisoning our... Alright, there we go. We got him. We got him. To say that would be very surprising if that uh, poison cloud was not doing anything for us. Also, swift sword, good weapon, but we don't have any brutality going for us, so probably not worth it. Yeah, do we want to check out up here? There might be another stat upgrade. There might not be. It could just be maybe there's a shop. There is a shop, but nothing that gives us skills, and we haven't unlocked the reroll ability yet, so we can't really do anything there. We gotta. We'll peek. We'll peek a little bit through here. And by that I mean, we're just gonna kill everything because we have nothing better to do with our time anyway, so... Might as well. It, it can't hurt, I guess is what I'm saying. Though, I feel this run is doomed if we don't get a better weapon. Because our health... Eh, it's actually gotten... It's gotten up there. Like, we went from 187 or 189 or whatever it was to for something, so we're not bad. Not great, but not bad. And I mean, 457, that should be pretty reasonable, all told. And plus we have a 10% damage reduction modifier on us as well, so that's good. And we're, I actually think I'm gonna unlock the rest of the stock exchange off camera, probably. Just because. I mean, I guess that does kind of, a little, Reduce the lifespan of having episodes where we are working towards unlocking new content or unlocking new content. But I actually want to, I want to see that. I want to see the stock exchange, so I think it'll all balance out is where I'm going with it. And plus then it, it gives us more options on future runs, so I think it's the right call. Probably, maybe. Possibly. Also, I really like that now our arrows will, like, come back to us over time. It's good. It's good stuff. That cloud, this poison cloud, is not as useful as I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. Not against this guy. Mostly because the poison doesn't seem to build up in him very fast, which is kind of weird to me. Just a little bit. But we got all our arrows back, which I think is was a... That might be from the frost grenade itself, which I think causes arrows to fall. Unless I'm mistaken. And we're, we're chipping away at him. This is definitely not our strongest of runs, but... We're doing okay for ourselves. Like, we're, we're holding our own. We're holding our ground. Ow, good job. And that's really what matters at the end of the day, isn't it? Good job, Gaslight. I mean, we could have aced this fight but then I just kind of like stopped caring about if I took damage or not. I guess not that it mattered in the end since we still ended up winning, so that was good. All right, and we've got a good thing going here so far. Pretty reasonable. And uh, yeah. Now we just play the waiting game, and by that I mean we, well, we had to kind of wait for the, the loading screen there, but I know with my laptop right now, we're gonna be facing some lag, I think, in Fog Fjord. It's gonna get kind of framey, because there's a lot going on in Fog Fjord. At least that's my assumption for why. The clock tower, I think, also. I got there once off camera while uh, trying to get my bearings with the new update, and that seems to be pretty framey as well on my current setup. So I might try to avoid those levels until I get my my regular computer back, which is kind of unfortunate because. What little I saw of the clock tower and have seen of the clock tower so far, it looks like a pretty sweet level. So, yeah, like it's my kind of level. It's got all kinds of gears and it's very steampunky and it's very towery, which is cool. Unfortunately, we can't go to that time door because we were much too slow. But what I really like about that time door is that even if you miss the time door for 
or the uh, incomplete one, you might still have time to grab uh, the time door in Fog Fjord, which is pretty nice. I don't recall there being anything in that time door, though. I don't think there's anything in there, at least not for us. If we started a completely new run, also, this is... That's kind of a funny place. It's, it's useless. It doesn't get us anywhere. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's there, so I guess I shouldn't knock it. I mean, that could give us, like, a, a few temporary seconds to escape. Also, yeah, you can kind of see the framiness getting in here now. It would give us a few seconds to escape and get our bearings if we found ourselves in a rough, a rough patch somewhere. So that's good. Yeah, this framing is... I do wonder if it has to do with the enemies, or could it be the water graphics? Could that be it? Could it be the water? I mean, the water's not that animated, so surely not. I mean, I know that, like, in, uh, in games where, like, water physics are, like, a really big thing, like, apparently realistic water physics is pretty processing intensive, but surely, surely, Surely here, it's mostly just a, like a, a, a simple animation that's like not trying to realistically model water. But who knows? I mean, it does have reflections. Also, good good waste of a, of a frost grenade there. I mean, not that it's that big a deal, I suppose. It also occurs to me I shouldn't be killing all these host zombies because, just you watch, we're gonna get a cursed chest somewhere in, maybe even in this very room right here. And then I'm going to regret not having these things because, what is it? These host zombies can spawn like three or four. Oh yeah, look, there it is, the first chest. They can spawn like three or four little slug things. Plus they themselves count as well. So you can get like four to five curse reduced. Probably should have read that to see if it added anything particularly valuable because it would have been a strong item right there since it was colorless. But then again, it would increase the damage we take, and that's not good, so. You can't have stuff like that. All right, let's get this, let's get rid of this curse. We can totally do it. It's gonna happen. All right, smash. No, and I let it hit me, dang. Uh, I should have taken it slow and also rolled out of the way. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode. So until the next time, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that like button or maybe leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking and I'll see all you in the next video.